Hello there, Master Hellish here, and welcome to 10 more Open TTD tips. If you want to see my other tips videos, check out the link in the description for my tutorial playlist. I'm Master Hellish, and you can find out more about me and the things I do on masterhellish.net. But for now, let's fill you up with some more info. Number 10. Learn to use the transparency options. If you go to the main menu up here and click on the options button, you can drag down to transparency options. You can also open this with the keyboard shortcut and the default is control and X. Now this can be really good if you're trying to work with track and for example trees are in the way. You can click the button for trees and it will make them transparent. If you click the button beneath the trees it will complete make it completely invisible. And you can see here there's actually a signal on that bit of track that is hidden by the tree and we wouldn't know that if we didn't make the tree invisible. Other things for, you might need it for, for example, is trying to find a bus station in the middle of a city. You can make the buildings either transparent or completely invisible. And you can see we've got bank, we've got our statue of the company owner, and we've got a bus station in there. Now, you can use the bottom option to make them completely invisible, or the top option to make them transparent. You can lock these so that you can hold control, and when you click them, that means they are locked to that particular state. So when you press X on your keyboard to toggle the transparency, then you only see the things that you have not locked toggle. So just to clarify, everything on this bar will toggle on and off when you press X on your keyboard, which can be very handy. Now, if you want it so, for example, the trees are always transparent, you can make them transparent, hold control and click to lock it, and that way when you toggle, it toggles everything except that, and the trees will always stay transparent. Number nine, use the filter string in your game settings. Many things in OpenTTD rely on the game settings, so if we go up to options and down to settings, we can find them here. The first thing to notice, you usually need to have this set on expert to show all the settings, because there are a lot of settings that can affect a lot of things in OpenTTD. And sometimes finding those settings can be a little bit difficult. It's actually one of the things that the devs said they want to reduce, if possible, is the number of settings. So let's see if we want to find the maximum bridge length. Well, use the filter string. If we put BRI, you can see that we've got maximum bridge length filtered in down here, and it's currently set to 100 tiles. Or what if we want to do station spread? Super or SPR, depends how you say it. And look, there we go, the maximum station spread. You might not know the name or what the setting is, and you'll get more familiar with these the more you play the game, but really that filter string is a really good way to find that setting that you really want to look up. Number eight, control clicking on a vehicle will start it or stop it. This one can save your life if two trains are about to crash or are about to plow into a level crossing and you don't want them to. It's a nice, simple, little, easy one. So all you've got to do is hold control on your keyboard and click on a vehicle. For example, I just clicked on that one as it went in the tunnel and it said stopped. There's another one over here. Maybe we want to stop that one and we can do so as well. Once a vehicle is stopped, of course, you can start it up again. Just control click and off it goes. Don't use it very often, but sometimes it's one of those things that's good to keep in the back of your head for those emergency situations. Number seven, don't be afraid to experiment. This is a bit of a general one, but it's a good piece of advice and a good tip. Don't always just copy things from the wiki or from other people. Experiment around, try new things, do things different ways. You learn more this way, and you can also find new and interesting ways of doing things. For example, this station layout here, I've never seen or done anything like this before, but it seems to be working quite nicely. There's a little split here where the incoming trains can decide where they want to choose on their platforms, and they flow out quite nicely too. Will I use it again? I don't know, but did I learn about the way that the trains flow and how they find the platforms from the signals? Yeah, I, I kind of gained my knowledge a little bit. Experiment. Don't be afraid to do things that are different and do it wrong. Because, after all, we learn well from our mistakes. Number six. Use filters when viewing the world map. So up on the main menu we've got the world map option, and this can be a little bit daunting sometimes with lots of different bits of information. Especially if you've got town names line like this and you're playing in 4K. 
The option to turn town names on and off is down here in the filters and the filters are very useful. Just be aware that you've got things like the land height filter which allows you to see where the map is hilly and where it's nice and flat. The vehicles option so you can see where the vehicles are snaking around in your network and potentially where bottlenecks might be. The Industries one, which I'll come back to in a second, along with these options down here to show the Cargo Flow Legends, which can be interesting if you're using the Cargo Flow distribution or just seeing where your lines are busy and quiet. Or you can just go back to the standard line view, or you can actually enable the topography that shows all the trees and farms and land and so forth. And another one which I like for multiplayer games is the landowners one as well. This shows you where people are on the map in terms of each company. My company colours are red, so I'm the big red lines all over the map. Back to the industries quickly, and this one is a good one to look at the bottom left hand corner. Here you can see that we've got different industries all listed. You can disable these and enable them, and you can do it so that you can only so sh show certain ones. For example, we can turn on all the power stations and the little red power stations show on the map. If we hover over the industry, it flashes, and I like to have this so I can easily see where they are when planning my rail routes. Number 5. Tries furs and other mods. So playing the base game of OpenTTD is good, but sometimes you can make that better or just try new things by installing mods. I'm not going to tell you exactly how to do that here, that is included in my tutorial series, so go check that out, link in the description. But a good one I can recommend to maybe start off with is Furs. Furs adds more industry sets. For example here we have an iron ore mine, a special iron ore mine, uh, we've got a hotel and a steel mill there as well. There's all sorts of different industries you can have in this set piggeries and uh, dairies and all sorts of other things. It adds different places for you to be able to take all the different things from and to. Clay, food, chemicals, farm supplies. It just expands your options and allows you to make more complicated networks. I definitely recommend taking a look at it if you already haven't before. Number four, use shift to find out how much something is going to cost. So you want to decide whether to build a railway line or whether to build a tunnel. One way of deciding how much it could cost and whether you're going to do it is just to hold shift. It brings you up an estimated cost. It's telling me here that this tunnel is going to cost me 45 grand. So if I pop it in, well, yes, it was right. It's costing 45 grand. Sometimes a fantastic thing to do if you're just not sure whether it's a good investment or whether you've got enough money. Number three, pay off your loan. So in your company finances, you can see that you can have a loan. And in fact, you start the game with some loan already taken out. And very often people increase this loan amount so that they can build their transport empire. However, this loan does cost you interest at a regular interval. So it's a good idea to pay off whenever you can so that you can avoid those extra costs. You can either click repay a number of times to be able to pay that off or control click it to actually repay the whole lot. Number two, learn to play using keyboard shortcuts. So using the mouse is quite efficient. It's a nice little input tool. And to build some track, you have to go up to the menu bar, choose the railway construction option, and then choose the auto tool or the piece of track that you want before you can then place it down. Now all of that mouse movement and two clicks can be avoided by just pressing the A key on your keyboard to bring up the auto tool. It's a lot quicker. So learning these shortcuts can be much better, especially B for bridge, there we go, and D for the demolition tools, and S for signals as well. You can use R for switch to remove mode, and you can hold control to toggle that remove mode, like that. Now I do touch more on these shortcuts in my tutorial series and there's also a list on the wiki. I highly recommend you check it out. You'll find the game much easier to play if you bother to learn these shortcuts. Yes, it takes a little bit of effort to begin with, but it is definitely a good payoff. Number one, watch my tutorials. No, I'm joking. Order station list by waiting cargo. So once you've got your network up and running, you sometimes can be difficult to see where the demand is for more services to, to meet the amount of needs of the cargo needing to be transported from a station. What you need to do is go to the station list up here on the main menu and order by total waiting cargo. 
Sort by this and you'll see all the different bits of cargo that you're waiting at your stations and with the ones with the most amount at the top. So we can see here in this example, London North has got 3,579 passengers. Not great, we need more trains to shift them. You can filter this by just looking at just trains, aeroplanes or road vehicles or ships. You can actually choose the actual transportation type or you can actually filter it by the cargo. Say we only want to look at coal or maybe we want to only look at oil. There's not many trains doing oil or we only want to look at passengers. So if we look at trains doing passengers, you can see here that we've got a few stations where the passengers are starting to stack up. Peterborough, Exeter Holt, Doncaster, and these are candidates to where we're probably going to need more vehicles to shift those goods. So there we go folks, a nice little collection of tips to hopefully help you in your open TTD gameplay. Did you know some of these already or have you got your own tips that I haven't mentioned? Pop them down in the comments, I'd like to know. And of course, if you want to see more videos like this, subscribe so you make sure that you don't miss any and check out the link in the playlist once again for that full tutorial series. People tell me it is rather good. Thanks for watching, take care and for now, goodbye.